Hello everyone, it is Carrie, and today I am going to be doing a review of this very beautiful and unique tarot deck. Now the first thing I should mention about this deck is that I do not know how to pronounce the name of the artist. I have heard people say Japri, which is normally how I pronounce it, but I have also heard people say Japridze, so I do not know the correct way to say the name of this artist. I truly wish I did, but at any rate, this is a deck I've been working with a lot lately. If you follow me on Instagram or Facebook or anything like that, you've probably seen some images from the deck, so I'm looking forward to sharing with you some of my perspectives and my opinions on this tarot deck. So here's the box of the tarot deck. It is a really nice, steady, firm cardboard box, and it's quite large, as you can tell. The sounds may be nitpicky to some people, but I really enjoy having a steady box like this because if you are fond of taking your decks around with you, throwing them in bags or anything like that, this kind of ensures that this deck is going to be well protected in the box. Now, I'm not extremely well versed in different art styles, but I can tell you that the imagery in this deck is quite surreal. And the according to the back of the box, there's a lot of collage style artwork happening in the deck as well. Now when we open the box up, we see the reason that the box is as large as it is, is that the deck does come with this uh, guidebook. So this is, you can see the size of the book by the palm of my hand here. And um, it's a very actually pretty book. It has color illustrations of each of the cards and then gives you just sort of a, a not extremely in-depth, but it gives you a bit of a uh, understanding of what each of the cards is all about. So it's not something that's really going to take you all the way and describe necessarily the imagery in any great amount of detail, but it is something to give you a jumping off point and it's a nice little bonus that comes with the deck. You don't have to buy this guidebook separately. I have the cards here now out of the box and you can see here what the backing of the cardstock looks like. My, I, I like the backing of the cardstock. Um, I do have a bit of a, a bit of a confusion about why this particular cardstock was chosen because to me, this looks almost kind of Celtic style with this, with the uh, imagery here. And it doesn't, I think, go extremely well with the art style we'll see in the deck, but at any rate, it's nice looking. I don't have really too many complaints about um, the back of the, the cardstock. One thing I will mention as well before I start really looking at the, the imagery and going into more details of the deck with you is that these cards are quite large, as you may be able to tell. They are larger than most of the tarot decks that I have. Again, you can see the size of that in the palm of my hand. This is, again, maybe just sort of a nitpicky thing to complain about, but if you do not have the largest of hands... Um, it can be a little tricky to shuffle this deck if you do like a poker style shuffle, which is what I do. Um, I've When I use this deck, I've now began using an overhand shuffle just because the cards are a bit on the large side. I've laid out a few cards here to give you an overall feel for what this deck is like. It's a, I can't say I've quite seen a deck that I could even really compare this one to. As you can tell from the images, there is a lot of surrealism going on with the art. Um, there's a few cards in particular that I'll show you in a moment that are even more extreme in terms of this surreal style. These ones um, kind of have a mixture here. Now, the suits in the Japri Tarot are winds, which correlate to swords in a rider weight system, tides, which correlate to cups, Fire, which correlates to wands, and gardens, which of course correlates to pentacles or coins. So that's one change that has been made in the deck. The imagery is not Rider weight derivative. It's essentially its own bag of tricks. Now there are a few cards that are somewhat similar. You can see where the influence came from the Rider weight system, such as the Three of Winds or the Three of Swords, somewhat similar to what we see in decks that are based off the Rider weight system. But there's other cards that are essentially their own unique blend of imagery that doesn't really seem to be based off anything we've seen anywhere before. This deck has also made some changes to the court card structure. As you can see here, we have a stranger 
and a gesture, the gesture being equivalent to what in the writer weight system would be a page, and the stranger being equivalent to a knight. Now I'm not, I haven't really come to terms or even given much thought to why this change was made in this particular deck, but it does seem to work with the theme. There is somewhat of going along with the surrealist thing. There is somewhat of a circus vibe, uh, for lack of a better term, and some of the cards or a performance vibe might be a way to put that. So these titles seem to, to go along with this, the overall feeling that is at work in the deck. There is quite a bit of human imagery, or I should say human figure imagery. Um, as you can see here by the cards that I'm showing you, even when we do have a human figure in this deck, it is not necessarily a, a lifelike depiction of a human. Now I like that about this deck because it takes away some of the complexity of gender, sexual orientation, race, all of these things that sometimes can feel a bit strange in other tarot decks in terms of how we relate to them. So those aspects are taken away in this deck as the, the human figures are more of a kind of surrealist, uh, whimsical, whimsical isn't even really the word I'm looking for, just more of a kind of alternate reality type figure. Here I'm showing you a few cards from the Major Arcana. Let me go closer so you can see those better. I grabbed these three just as an example of how some of the cards in the deck are even more on the, the surrealist side. So when you, when you really hone in and look closely at some of these cards, it at first feels a bit jarring, um, for lack of a better word, and a bit intense. There's a lot going on, and it's not necessarily a deck where you can look at the image right away and have a very clear-cut understanding of what's happening in the, in the image. It's a deck that makes you think a little more deeply, and it's a deck that I would say challenges you to expand your mind and to look at things from new perspectives. So if you're looking for a deck that is more sort of psychedelic, um, or sort of more expansive in terms of what is possible for these images, this is a deck that you might really be interested in adding to your collection. I went through and grabbed a few of my favorite cards. Now this is very difficult to do because there are so many cards in this deck that really make me think about the archetypes of tarot in new ways. It truly portrays things in a way that challenges me to expand my mind and to make room for new thought patterns and to make room for a deeper and more expansive sense of magic. That I keep saying that word expansive, but it is a word that I that I do associate with this deck. It's um when I look at the images in this deck, I feel like I'm looking at a world that I know that is somehow very familiar yet at the same time very new and full of possibility and it's just kind of like looking through reality through a slightly different lens. The other side of the coin, the, these are a few cards that I am not quite as fond of. Now I really, this is just a matter of personal preference, so everyone will be different, but it isn't one of those decks that I feel I necessarily completely love and connect with every single card. There are some that just don't quite hit the mark for me, these being a few examples. I won't go into the details of why, but um, I will say that uh, with Temperance, just as an example, I think that this deck can be challenging for those of us who are very accustomed to the system of tarot and the way that although different decks do draw upon different imagery, there's typically some similar aspects to that imagery. This card, I think, is an example of where this particular deck just throws all of those notions out the window and goes with its own completely unique portrayal. Now, sometimes that works really well for me. Other times that becomes difficult for me to kind of sink myself into. And I wouldn't even say it's that I don't like the image. It's more just that it's hard for me to really intuitively click into some of these images and apply them and kind of align them with my own consciousness to extract wisdom and extract magic from them. I would be remiss if I did not talk about one of the greatest changes to the traditional tarot structure that has been made with this deck, and that happens in a major arcana card four, which we typically know as the Emperor. In this deck, the Emperor has been changed to war. Now, uh, Marianne from Two Sides Tarot wrote a really interesting blog post. She has this deck as well, and she talked about coming to terms with the way that this card has been portrayed in this particular deck, so I will link to her blog post below the video. 
I will say that for myself, I'm still trying to come to terms with this. It, to me, I think that all of the archetypes in tarot have a more, let's say, positive or light side and also more of a shadow side. And um, I kind of take a little bit of problem with this particular card because I feel that it focuses more on that shadow side and it, it hasn't given me a lot of room to work with the more positive sides of the archetype of the emperor. And that's even more nailed in by the fact that the title of the card was changed to War. As I close out the review, I'm showing you just a few more cards, kind of just trying to give you a good sampling and a um, sort of cohesive understanding of what the imagery is all about. My overall feelings on this deck, I, I do have a very special connection with the deck and I really enjoy it. However, I would say that this deck is a deck that you have to, or I shouldn't say you, I have to, and probably many people would share this sentiment, have to work at that connection, right? So there's some decks that you start working with them and everything just clicks right away. This is a deck that feels a little more tentative. It feels a little more like I have to wade into it. I have to experiment with it. I have to sit with it and see how the dust settles. I really sense that this will be a deck that my feelings about the cards will evolve greatly over time. And it's a deck that I already have spent time considering the images in some depth, but it's a deck that I truly feel there would be no end to how much contemplation I could put into the deck. It's one of those decks that gives you answers by not giving you answers. The last thing I want to mention about this deck is um, probably pretty much as soon as I finished this review, I had been waiting because I wanted to show you the deck as is for the review, but very soon I will be taking a knife and I will be removing the white borders on the card. I do think I'll leave the titles at the bottom. I wish the titles were in maybe a handwritten font or a font that goes along a little better with the imagery in the deck, but at any rate, uh, I think that once these borders are removed, these images are going to be liberated and they're going to be even more thought-provoking and even more captivating than they are as is. So that's my review of this deck. It is published by US Game Systems. If you want to look into getting your own copy, it came out in 2014. If you do have questions about the deck, please feel free to leave a comment and I will do my best to try to give you some insight on that. Thank you so much for watching. It's a truly unique deck and I'm looking forward to, to getting to know it even better as time goes on. Take care. Bye-bye.